It seems that almost any time anyone asks for hardware advice nowadays, the answer is Ryzen, and for good reason. Ryzen is a great choice for a whole range of systems, but which Ryzen CPU should you buy? What's the difference between a 1400 and a 1600 and a 1600X and an 1800X? Well, that's what I'm gonna be explaining here today, along with which CPU you should buy for your own specific scenario. Let's talk about the different types of Ryzen CPU before we go into the specific model numbers. So there are currently three different types of Ryzen CPU, and that is the Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 7 lines. Now, these are relatively easy to describe because they only differ based on their number of cores and number of threads. So Ryzen 3 has four cores and four threads. Ryzen 5 has either four cores and eight threads for the 1400 and 1500X models, or six cores and 12 threads for the 1600 and 1600X models. And Ryzen 7 has eight cores and 16 threads. So those that have double the number of threads as they do cores do so thanks to simultaneous multi-threading. And this is basically a way for your computer to divide each core into two logical threads to improve its multi-threaded performance. And now, whereas this doesn't essentially give you double the core performance, it does give you a very significant increase nonetheless. With that down, let's get on to the first piece of advice, and that is which lineup of CPUs you want to be looking at. So if you're a gamer, Ryzen 3 will perform very similar to Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 in a majority of games, and that's because games really aren't leveraging more than those first four cores yet, and we really don't have much of an indication as to how this is going to change with future releases. We can expect for games to leverage more cores and threads, but we really don't have much information on that right now. So also paying extra to future-proof your system by going with a six or eight core CPU might not be the best idea. And what's very important to remember as well is that your lower tier CPU will devalue a lot less over time than a higher tier CPU. So if you pay less for your CPU now, because it doesn't depreciate that much over time, getting an upgrade later on won't cost you too much money. Like I said, Ryzen 5 has the advantage of throwing SMT into the mix to give you more threads, as well as offering four cores and six cores if you're willing to pay a little bit extra for that higher tier CPU. I would recommend the four cores if you're a heavy multitasker, and I don't mean having a lot of Chrome tabs open. I mean if you want to be playing a game and getting the best performance you can, and at the same time streaming video from a streaming service. This might warrant going with a higher tier CPU, also if you have a lot of programs in the background. But having a look at the six cores, those are really for far more heavily threaded workloads. So if you are gaming and streaming your gameplay from the same system, you may want to have a look at the six core or even the eight core chip. And if you were doing quite heavy video editing, then again, the six core might be where you want to be looking at. As for Ryzen 7, most heavily threaded workloads will scale quite well with extra CPU cores. So if you're doing something like video editing that does take advantage of a lot of cores, then you may want to look into spending the extra to get that eight core CPU. You will get extra performance for it, but it is really up for you to decide whether that extra expenditure is worth the extra performance. And I'd recommend having a look at some performance figures, some benchmarks, to see the sort of performance gain you can get with your specific scenario and deciding for yourself whether it's worth the extra money. But what are the differences between the specific Ryzen model numbers if they have the same number of cores and threads? Well, the Ryzen 3 has the 1200 and 1300X quad cores. The Ryzen 5 lineup has the 1400 and 1500X quad cores, as well as the 1600 and 1600X six cores, and Ryzen 7 has the 1700, 1700X, and 1800X eight cores. First of all, if you take two Ryzen CPUs and they have the same number of cores and same number of threads, they are the same CPU. That's right, underneath that heat spreader, they are the same pieces of silicon manufactured in the same way. So why on earth do these CPUs cost more? Well, that's to do with the clock speeds. The more expensive Ryzen CPUs that have the same number of cores and threads 
are selected by AMD during manufacturing and they are essentially overclocked in the factory so that out of the box they run at a faster speed than their counterpart without any system stability issues so that essentially you have a faster CPU that will pretty much benefit any task that you want to be using it for. And what this essentially does is save you having to overclock the processor yourself. You're essentially paying AMD for that service so that you don't have to worry about it. So here we are again, which Ryzen CPU should you buy? Well, if you intend to overclock your CPU, then you're probably best off going with the cheapest CPU with the specific number of cores and threads that you desire. And that's because if you were to take a 1700, a 1700X and an 1800X, they are the same CPU that are just running at a different speed out of the box. And since you're going to be manually changing those speeds anyway, it's really not worth it to pay the extra money. That's really all you're getting. And in fact, if you were to take the 1700, you get a stock cooler, whereas with the 1700X and the 1800X, you do not. The same goes with the 1600 and the 1600X. The 1600 comes with a stock cooler, whereas the 1600X doesn't. And whereas if you're overclocking, you're gonna to wanna to get a better CPU cooler anyway, at least you have that there to initially test your CPU, and it's always handy to have on hand as a backup. But if you're not overclocking, it might be worth looking into spending a little bit extra for that higher clocked CPU, because even in the most mundane tasks, it can give you a slight performance gain. And to use gaming as an example again, going with the 1300X instead of the 1200 can give you a noticeable performance increase. Again, I would recommend looking up benchmarks of what you intend to use your system for and looking at how much performance you can gain from one model to the other and then deciding if for your use case it is worth the extra money. I would love to give you a whole range of tasks and show you all of the benchmarks for each one and tell you which one is worth your money, but that's really not gonna fit into this video and I don't want to drag it out too much, but that is essentially what you want to be doing. On a side note, I think it's fantastic that AMD are doing this because what they're saying is that if you're an enthusiast who wants to overclock your CPU, here, here's a bare CPU that costs less money, go ahead and overclock it. But if you're not into overclocking, here, we'll do it for you. We're gonna charge you a little bit of money for it, but what it means is that everyone can have a fantastic performing CPU straight out of the box with no worries and you don't have to spend the extra, which I think is great because it means people like me can spend a little bit less and put in the work themselves, or they can just say, I want something that just plain works, pay a little bit extra and get that. I hope this cleared up some confusion if you were wondering what the differences were between those specific Ryzen models. And I definitely don't think it's a bad thing AMD are doing this. You can get a significant performance increase by spending a little bit more. It's definitely not snake oil or anything. But I think that's it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please go check out my channel for more tech videos and consider subscribing. But also go down below, rate this video and comment. Let me know what you think about AMD's lineup. Do you think they're onto something here by essentially providing an overclocking service? Or do you think that since all the CPUs are unlocked that they're kind of wasting their time? Would love to hear what you think. But thanks again for watching. This has been Frank Yeager with Yeager Tech. Have a good one.